What is going on, guys? Algorithmic Jason here with the day four JavaScript 30 challenge by Wes Boss. And we have a lot to cover today, so we're going to go ahead and dive into it. As always, the link will be down in the description below if you want to follow along. Today, we have um, work to do in the console. So uh, what we're given is a, a variable inventors, and it has an object in there with the objects first with a first um key and then a name as the value same thing for last year and past and this is actually an array of objects so we have multiple of them the next thing that we have is a an array with strings so let's jump into what we had to do in order to get this to work. So we have a constant invent, oh, it says filter the list of inventors for those who were born in the 1500s. So we have to filter through this array and find the object whose year is equal to anything in between 1500. So the way we do that is we create a variable and then we're going to use the filter method. We're going to filter through each of these inventors, labeling each one as an inventor. And then you're going to target the key year. And then if that year is greater than or equal to 1500 and the year is not greater than 1599 or 1600, so and inventor.year is less than or equal to 1599. We're going to console.table this. So instead of console.log, we're going to console.table, which gives us something that looks like this first table that we see over here in the console. The next uh, exercise is a map. So give us an array of the inventor's first and last names. So I made a constant of array full names. You're going to do inventors.map, inventor again, and you're just going to console.log the inventor.first and the inventor.last. As we can tell, this is our result here. This is our output on this side. The next thing that we did is the sort method. So sort inventors by birth date, oldest to youngest. And what we did here was birth day, not age. So we're doing it by year. So as we can tell, our first person should be this person born in the 1400s, who is Nicholas Cap Capriniscus, Cas Cas Nicholas C. <laughs> and so, um, so we're doing oldest to youngest, inventor sort, you got the A and the B. So you got the person that it's first targeting and the person that it's comparing it to. So if the person that it's first comparing it to, if the year is less than, Second person that is comparing it to, we're going to return negative one, which puts um, A above in the list in this case. Or the person, sorry, the person that is uh, has the oldest year above in this case. And then if not, we're removing that person down in the list. So console.table, oldest, youngest, as you can tell here, our zero index person is Nicholas C was born in 1473. All right, so the next one that we did is a reduce. So how many years did all the inventors live all together? Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the year that they were born and then the year that they were um, deceased, we're gonna sub subtract those two years to get us the amount of years they lived and we're going to reduce it to add all these inventors numbers into one uh, into one thing. So inventors dot reduce. We got the total. Um, we got the total number, and then we have the inventor. So what we're going to do is the total, which should start at zero, plus inventor dot pass minus inventor dot year, which gives the amount of years they lived. And then the comma zero here is the initiation point of this total variable. So it starts off at zero and then it continues to add these numbers, whatever it is, 
and that's what the reduce function, that's what the reduce method does. So as you can tell here with console.log total years lived, and we interpolated that number. And then we did the um, total years lived string. So you can tell here, the number of all these is 861 total years lived. The next thing that we did is the sort. So sort inventors by years lived. And then we're gonna do sorted by years lived variable inventor sort a b and then that's this is the same thing that we're doing up here we're getting their age and we're just comparing it to the second person's age and then we're moving it appropriately so if it's if he's um i believe it's older it's the top one yeah so it's older he's going to move up in the list if not he's going to move down in the list the person will and then we'll console table this one, as you can tell here, this person lived about 90 years and this one only lived about, what is that? 55, so like 37, yeah, 37 years there. And so that's our list. Uh, exercise six says create a list of boulevards in Paris that contain D anywhere in the name or D anywhere in the name. And this one, we're gonna actually open the console, go to the Wikipedia and I'll walk through it with you guys. So these next three, I'll go ahead and walk through with you guys. So go ahead and open the console here. Shortcut option command J. And then the first thing that I wanna do is target Let's see, I want to target, I want to target the group, the group itself. So let's see. Let's see if I can grab it. Okay, so this looks like the whole group. So we got an MW category. Within this MW category, we have each individual group. So you can tell here. So I can target MW category group. And then let's see. So of course, these are all list items under an uh, unordered list. What they have in common is they're all anchors. You can tell they're blue and they're anchors. So what we can do is target the MW category group and then target all the anchors within that. So I can go MW category group, go to this console. So I'll do let target equal document.query selector mw I kept saying mw group but it's mw category group w category category group not to forget, this is a class that we're targeting. So since we use the query selector, we have to use the, the dot. And if I ask myself, am I targeting a single group? Or am I targeting all the groups? The answer would be all the groups. Therefore, we have to include the all. And then at the same time, we want to target all the anchors. So we, we're going to put a space and include the anchors. So let's see if this works. Search target. We get a node list with all the anchors within it. So it's looking good so far. The next thing that we're going to do is target dot for each. Since this is a node list, we have to use for each. We can't use um it can't use mapper or, or or anything like that um so for each we're going to enable it title and with this title we want to check that the title dot includes and then we're going to include there we're going to we're going to say there so let's see 
title dot, and then we have to target the inner text dot includes. So if we click here, we're titling, we're labeling this whole thing uh, title. And then if we scroll down to find inner text or inner HTML, that's where we target the actual, see Thier's wall, Thier's wall, the actual um, title here. Can't forget that. So title dot inner text dot includes D. And we just want to return all of them. So this should work. So if we, oh, I forgot to let's do let, let uh, titles equal target dot for each. And then if we return titles, we get undefined. All right, let's see what we did wrong here. We're targeting all the anchors. We're labeling them title right here for each title, title dot inner text. Okay, so let's try this. We want to console, let's just do console.log, console.log, title.intertext, just to see if we're targeting the right things. Okay, we are. We get a list of the inner text. Okay, so let's try this. We want to console.log, Title dot inner text that includes includes yeah okay let's see if this works it's like I missed one of these so we're opening there opening there okay so we get booleans okay so let's do a ternary so instead. We're gonna do title dot inner text. If it includes de, if it includes de, we want to console dot log it, which would be title dot inner text. Else we're gonna do null, so we're not gonna return it. So let's see if this works. Let titles equal target dot for each title. Title dot inner text includes the console dot log the title dot inner text. Else no. And I forgot one of these again. Right here, we gotta close the console dot inner text. Uh, and we have an extra one here. So we're closing this one that we started back here. We'll close that one. Close that one. Cool. Awesome, there we go. We returned everything with the de in it. Even this one that has D-E-S, it still includes de, so it just, when, when we use the method de, it doesn't matter if it's just de or if it has D-E-S-T, whatever, whatever, like it has D-E in it, so it's gonna return it. And that's how we get these, these uh, to log out here. So that's that's six there. Uh, if we go back here and we do the sort exercise seven, sort the people alphabetically by first name. I actually did alter this because it was last name, but I feel that first name would be a little bit more challenging since, um, or you know what, we can do it both ways. We can do it both ways so we can figure out what's going on. So we got let, we're gonna create a variable. And we're sorting these so people sorted equal um, people variable and then so we're going to sort them people dot sort and we want to run a want to run a function that that breaks down these um, strings that we have, so we can do function. And you know what? Let's try this. So we're gonna do sort a, b. So we got the first person and the second person, like I said earlier. 
we're going to do an arrow function, open it here. And what we need to do is actually split um, these strings because there's just one whole string. We need to split them into do two different strings so we can compare the names. So we can use the, the array deconstructing. And the way this works is we're going to write a constant. We're going to say um, within this array, we have a A. Uh, we actually have the last name first. Person A's last name. And we have the person A's first name. What, what I mean by this is the, the um, parameter A. We want to split it because it's one long string. And we want to split it by, if we look at the names, we're going to split it by the, the comma and the space because they all have a comma and space. So we can say split it by the comma and space. We want to write two of these for the second person. Uh, B, B, B. Okay. After we're done with that, we need to return. Let's see, sort by alphabetically by first name in this case. So we need to return the person with the the name that has the sorted A through Z, basically. So we need to return. Uh, let's see. A, A first, we can do a ternary. It's greater than B first. That's true, we want to return. And honestly, what I do here is trial and error. So let's see what we got. We need to console log this. So console.log people sorted. If you look down here, the way I wrote it looks like their first name is starting from Z and ending in A. So if we wanted to reverse this, we just have to simply move these negative signs around. And now this list is organized by their first name and starting with A through Z. And the way uh, West Boss originally had it, he had it by last name. So if we wanted to do that, we just have to simply do, instead of first, we do last. So if we can see here, we have Beck which comes before Blake. So we got a BE before the BL, and this list looks correct. That is exercise seven. And finally, for exercise number eight, we have a reduce. Go ahead and comment that out. This is just some practice work that I was doing. So the first thing that we have to do is reduce this data. So we can say, let data reduced, reduced equal data dot reduce. And we want to reduce this into, let's say, to sum up the instances of each of these. We want to reduce it into an object that, that gives us the key of whatever the value is here, and then the value of it, which would be the, the cases or the instances of each of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and write a function. We're gonna say, we got A and B that we're comparing. Um, the next thing we do is open the function. And we want to say, We gotta write an if statement because we have to decide if 
if this value is already in the object, then don't do anything. If it's if it's not in the object, then create an instance of it. So we can say if not, we got use the title is better. So we can say this one's the object. This one is the transportation, since we have transportations up here. So if not object, the transportation, then we have to create one. So we say, let's say um, object transportation. We're going to say the value of that equals zero. Okay. We don't need an else statement because if, if it's not true, then it will just skip it and then it will go to this next part that we're going to write. So we're going to say, so we have the initiation there. And then we have to say, say object transportation if it gets to this say plus plus which is equivalent of saying the value is gonna equal one more than what it already is so say object transportation plus plus and then when this whole thing is done we want to return the object that we've created at the same time we have to include the initiation of the object so we're going to create that here, initiate it with the empty object. And then, so once we console.log the data reduced, we should see the list. So we do here. So we have byte, which got two instances. So we have one, two. So that looks correct. And we have car with five, truck with three, van with two, and walk with two. That was it for the day three, day four of JavaScript 30 challenge by West Boss. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Also, if you have any questions, don't be scared to reach out to me. I'm available through YouTube, of course, but also my email is algorithmicjason at gmail.com. Thank you.